is. <laughs> um, yeah, like that. And that uh, how are you guys doing? All right, everybody in there having a good time today? Good, good. So um, yeah, like that little brief paragraph. I've been very lucky um, to work a lot of different places in the world, uh, from Beirut to Rio de Janeiro, um, down to uh, to France and Hong Kong. Uh, I've worked just about everywhere, and I'm very lucky to uh, to be able to have that experience. Uh, right now, we moved from Chicago to Palm Springs. I'm originally from New York, and we love it out here. So, you know, I came out to open up the Kimpton Rowan Hotel uh, down in downtown Palm Springs, the new big hotel that just opened up down there. And I left in, uh, in December uh, because I figured this would be a great place to open up a private business. So SMW Inspired, those are my initials. Um, and the food is inspired, obviously, by my, my travels and my experience. Um, and uh, we do anything from cooking classes to uh, private dinners uh, we also do canapé parties, buffets, things like that, uh, right in your home. Uh, I'm working on a brick and mortar uh, to uh, open up a butcher shop and a specialty food market, uh, hopefully by the end of the year. Uh, there's not a lot of private ones here uh, in, the, uh, in the valley, uh, and I would like, uh, if you guys have a minute afterwards, to give me your feedback on whether or not you think that's a good idea. I don't know. Yeah? <laughs> I think, you know, for butcher shops and stuff, you really just have the, the big grocers, and I don't think you have that kind of old-style uh, butcher shop that I grew up with. Um, originally from Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, uh, my grandfather had a butcher shop there, and he moved up north, and I grew up in the shop stocking shelves, beer, making sandwiches, running cigarettes, things like that. So I've um, been really lucky to have uh, been food my whole life. Uh, but hopefully you guys have the recipe there in front of you. Um, we're going to do a couple of different things that may not be on the recipe today. Uh, I went to the Palm Springs Farmer's Market this morning, uh, and there's some really beautiful things. I don't know, does anybody go to the local markets here? Yeah, yeah, it's great. You know, there's a lot of, uh, lot of great produce out there. Um, you know, you can get it from the markets, which are usually maybe a little bit better of a price. Um, but, you know, you look at things like the snap peas, right? Snap peas I get from Trader Joe's, right, that I got you know, to, to prep this because I didn't know where to get them, right? But then if you look at the ones I got from the market this morning, look how different, right? So much more plump, more alive. I mean, if you look at the, the diameter on that alone, I mean, look how many more peas are in there, right? You're going to get way more bang for your buck, even though it's going to be a little bit more money, right? Uh, so right today, we're doing a really simple crab salad. Uh, Dungeness crab comes from the, uh, you know, the northern Pacific up through uh, central California all the way up. Uh, it's a great seasonal ingredient. Uh, I think for right now in spring, where it's almost 100 degrees already, it's nice to do a cold appetizer for everybody today. Um, but there's all kinds of crab here, too, in Palm Springs. Uh, not in Palm Springs, but local to Palm Springs, right? If you consider local within 100 miles of where you live, Right? Where's 100 miles? It's Newport Beach. Newport Beach is 83 miles away. And I'll tell you one of my secrets, as long as none of you guys are chefs, but <laughs> there is a market there called Dory Fleet. Right? Dory Fleet in Newport Beach, if you get up at 3.30 in the morning and drive out there, right? they have all kinds of California golden king crab, box crab. They have rock crab, which is also known as the West Coast stone crab, live black cod, live uh, thorny head snapper sea urchin, sea cucumbers, I mean, anything you could possibly want. So if you, you know, think that there's no local seafood here, if you just drive 83 miles to Newport and you wake up early, you can go get the best fish uh, probably on the West Coast for me. Um, so it's really uh, important for me to be able to source the best ingredients I can find, right? That's uh, kind of the old cliche if you have an easy, um, you know, if you start with a great product, you know, the end product is going to be great no matter what you do, and you have to simply prepare it. Uh, so that's what we're going to do with today. Uh, we have some beautiful Dungeness crab. You know, this comes in, uh, I buy this fresh. Uh, it works about, you know, $43 a pound. Uh, but if you think how many crabs it takes to cost, you know, to, to make a pound of crab meat, right, you figure if you get even a large Dungeness crab, maybe three or four pounds, you're only going to get maybe a half a pound of meat off of it, you know. So that's why crab meat is so expensive. Uh, you can get the pasteurized stuff, but then it loses its ocean flavor. Uh, so that's really important to me, um, you know, especially with seafood, because seafood can be treated so many different ways and cryovacked and, 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 you know, packed in gas packs and stuff like that. Um, so even though we do live in the desert, hopefully some of you guys are here. Is anybody visiting or does everybody live here? Visiting? Okay, cool, welcome. Uh, but there is really good seafood here in the desert, uh, which I think is important to remember. Uh, so first, you know, we're going to start off with our uh, English pea puree. Uh, so we're going to do a nice mix of uh, English peas, some of the snap peas we picked up, uh, some spinach to set the green color, right? And then some avocados, right? Because what's great with seafood 
raw seafood, cold seafood is always avocado, right? And as opposed to maybe just kind of taking avocado and dicing it, uh, I thought it was a fun idea to just uh, put it into a puree with the English peas, right? Because normally you need a little bit of uh, dairy to make a very, very smooth puree. Uh, you need fat, right? Because if you just puree a vegetable without fat or anything else, it's going to be grainy no matter what. You always need a little bit of fat to make a really, really smooth puree, uh, whether it be potato or vegetable or avocado, which had a lot of natural fat to begin with. So we're just going to take the avocado. We'll do one avocado. All right, we'll pop that in the blender. And then we're going to take a little bit of our English peas here. Now, when you're blanching, right, always want to make sure that you have enough salt, right? Always enough salt, no matter what, right? Should taste like the ocean. Always taste like the ocean, right? You got to make sure. You got to taste your cooking. That's another thing, too. Um, it's really important uh, for me to layer your seasonings, right? So you season a little bit in the beginning, you season a little bit midway, and then you finish it with a little bit of salt. If you don't layer those seasonings, so you put all the salt in the beginning, maybe you put too much salt and you screw the whole thing up, right? If you put a little bit, little bit, little bit, or if you put all the salt at the end, the salt taste is right on the front of your tongue, and it can be very aggressive. Uh, whereas if you season as you go, uh, it'll be more harmonious uh, on the tongue and the palate and everything else. So we're going to take our English peas here. All right, we're going to blanch those. We're going to let those go for maybe a minute or two just to get nice and soft. Uh, there's nothing worse than crunchy peas. Anybody have crunchy peas? Yeah, yeah, crunchy peas can be a little chalky sometimes. They can have a lot of starch. Um, it's, yeah, it's important sometimes to have your vegetables cooked. Uh, I worked for a French chef, Laurent Tourndel, um, in New York City and Hong Kong. He took me all over the world. Uh, and his thing was always um, not to have the vegetables crunchy. So that's something that was beat into me as a young age. <laughs> so that's something that we, we, we had, especially when you're making a puree, though, too, is that it has to be cooked. Otherwise, again, the puree is going to be very kind of chalky. Right, so you want to make sure that the peas cook for about two or three minutes. Uh, in the meantime, what I can do, we can start making our crab salad. So, anybody have citrus trees in their in their yard? I bet, right? Lemons, oranges, blood oranges, grapefruits, pomelos. Everything grows here, right? A lot of it I see rots on the ground, <laughs> right? I mean, sometimes, even if somebody has one Meyer lemon tree, it can be like you know three or four hundred lemons. You know, what are you going to do with all that, right? So, for me, what I like to do. Uh, is that I'll take all the lemons, I'll put them in a, in a hotel pan, or just a large pan, and put about an inch of water, right? Cover that in aluminum foil and put it in a hot oven, maybe 400 degrees, uh, for about, uh, about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour, and that'll steam the lemons, right? So you let that cool, cut the lemons in four, and then I make a brine uh, that has fresh turmeric, a little bit of saffron, salt, and sugar, and water, and pour that hot brine over the quartered lemons. Make sure that that has a piece of paper on top. It's submerged overnight, right? And then the next day, I have a little food saver bag. You know, everybody knows a little food saver, little cryovac bags that you can do at home? And I'll put those in, and I'll cryovac it with the brine. And these will keep for six months or a year in your fridge. Uh, so you have preserved lemons. And you can do that really with any citrus that you have uh, growing in your yard. So that's you know, something that I always have in my pantry. It's always some sort of preserved citrus, which is kind of fun. Uh, well, I got carried away with preserved citrus, and the peas are cooked now. So <laughs> what we're going to do, okay, we're going to add now our spinach, okay, to the pot. And you're going to cook that spinach uh, until it's bright green, right? And you, again, you do want to cook it for a couple minutes, right? Normally spinach is in and out, right? But since we're making a puree here, we want to make sure uh, that the spinach is cooked, the peas are cooked, everything's nice and well cooked. Okay, not green and brown, not army brown peas or army brown uh, spinach, uh, but nice and bright green, uh, but still cooked. Okay? So in the meantime, what I do with these uh, preserved lemons that I make at home is that I take out then the citrus part, right, the flesh, right? And then what I simply do, right, now that I have that all peeled off, right, is that I'll dice the skin, right? And that's just a great way. Uh, we have a friend that has a lemon tree and an orange tree, and I go over there and I pick his lemons when I need citrus. <laughs> it's easy enough. Uh, we never had this, uh, these opportunities to do these things, you know, in, uh, in big cities, and that's 
why uh, you know me and my girlfriend moved out here was to have a, a better quality of life and to uh, enjoy the outdoors and that's what this this place is great for and we really love it here and we you know hopefully we won't be able to build up this business and we won't have to move back to the big city so um, so this looks like it's just about cooked right you may mean me about 90 seconds two minutes right spinach is getting uh, nicely cooked there and then we're gonna take a little bit of the water right not too much but a little bit of the water with the peas and the spinach and everything else in there all right and then anybody have a vita prep mixer at home vita prep vitamix oh man they're the best right once you invest in them you know they're like again they're expensive machines they're really expensive machines but once you you, you spend you know the 400 bucks for them you'll never go back i mean these things will make a a puree out of rocks from your driveway. I mean, they're just amazing. <laughs> just amazing. Uh, you know, really, really uh, quite a bit of horsepower to them, too. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pour a little bit of that water in there just to make sure we get going here, right? And you'll feel the, you'll hear the power off these things, too, once they get going here. Right? So just let that go for a sec. And then we'll go back to the crab salad here. So then we have our Dungeness crab, all right, all the nice big pieces. Just give myself a time check here, too. I only have a half an hour, it's a quick one. Put the preserved lemon in there. And then we just have a little bit of mayonnaise, right? Turn that off just for a sec. A little bit of mayonnaise, right? Because you have such a great quality crab that you don't want to overdress it, right? You don't want it to be creamy and have to take away uh, from that beautiful seafood flavor there. Okay? And then we'll just stop and we'll go back to this real quick. So now we have a really nice puree, right? And what I'm going to do with this now. We're going to find a a little mixing bowl, and in order, because we're going to be serving this, this uh, salad cold, right, we want to make sure that this puree stays cold, okay? So that's going to go in a bowl that's also in a bowl of ice, okay? So that, calm, that really calms down the cooking there, and that'll set that bright green color that you have there, Okay? Again, you just want to make sure you always give things a taste. Definitely needs more salt. If you don't taste as you go, guys, um, you know, by the time you get ready to serve, you know, it can be kind of an emergency moment, <laughs> right? So it's, it's always important for me uh, to taste as you go. I can't stress that enough. Okay. So that's all set. We'll go back to our little crab salad now. Uh, and then, you know, the last thing that I have on this, um, on this, uh, this, this salad here is just a little bit of herbs, right? And it could be anything you want. You know, well, I didn't want to go out and buy herbs today, you know, for a demo. Uh, I went out to my garden, uh, and I grow really beautiful, we grow, me and my girlfriend, really beautiful red celery uh, and some lemon balm. All right, lemon balm, if, is anybody familiar with the flavors of lemon balm? Yeah, very much like um, lemongrass or lemon verbena, uh, lemon basil. They all kind of taste a little bit similar in one way or another. And we'll go through and just kind of give that a really rough chop. All right? So that's a nice rough chop of the lemon balm. And then just a little bit of this uh, celery here as well. There we go. Okay. Always a little bit uh, of salt to taste as well. Right? So kind of put all that together. Right? And it looks very simple. We have our peas here for later. Maybe just a touch more mayonnaise just to cream it out. 
And that's basically the salad right there, okay? Add a little touch of salt. And of course, you have to eat this beautiful crab to see. A little bit more that it's well seasoned. So I'll put this aside. Put this down and make a little bit of space here. Um, again, you know, with the salad, we have the pea puree. Um, next thing we're going to do is that we're going to have some radishes on the salad too. And again, from the Palm Springs Farmer's Market this morning, right? You have your classic red radishes that you can get at the market, right? But there's so much more out there to try, right? So here you have a purple daikon, right? This you would have to peel before you eat it, um, but really beautiful in the middle, right? This is a great radish uh, for braising, right? Normally people just eat radishes raw. They'll have them a little bit of butter and salt or something like that. These are great for braising. Same thing with these black radishes as well. Really, really beautiful. Great for, uh, for cooking and braising. Uh, here we have watermelon radish, right? I don't think these are quite ripe enough, uh, but normally they would have a large green ring on the outside and a red ring in the middle. But again, I don't think they're ripe yet. This is just the first of the season so far. So watermelon radishes, these are great raw, but they do need to be peeled. Uh, and then here you have your classic French breakfast radish, right? These, are these for me, the, these, uh, the smaller they are, the more flavor they're going to have. When they get very big, they get kind of spongy sometimes. So usually I like to dive deep into something. I didn't want to drive out to Newport this morning to go pick up some crab because that would have been like five hours of traveling today, but I figured I'd pick up some radishes instead. So we have that, okay? So the next, uh, just a couple ways to do, right? Grapefruit, again, from the farmer's market, you can't beat it. This is a Oro Blanco grapefruit. All right, look how beautiful on the inside, right? Usually when you get them, the Texas Reds and things like that from the supermarket, they can be very spongy. But look how solid that is all the way through. Grapefruit should feel very heavy and very firm. If you have a grapefruit that's like, you know, the size of my head, which is a big head, right? <laughs> but it's very spongy, uh, that thing's not going to taste very good, okay? But this is nice, tight. Look at the way it glows. It's such a beautiful grapefruit. Uh, we get these from a guy named Pete down at the market. Um, and he also does another one called Mellow Gold, which is just to die for. So this, I'm going to take the skin off the outside of this. And I'll show you uh, one way. Because this, this grapefruit can be a little bitter sometimes, right, just a tad. And one thing I like to do sometimes is to be able to char the grapefruit, right? So I'll take this. We'll take the sections out, right? You probably don't have the right knife for this. It should probably be about 10 inches less, but we'll make it work. <laughs> yeah, nice and sharp, too. Anybody here last year for the event? Yeah? Did anybody see the, uh, the Hamachi demo I did last year, maybe? Oh, a couple people. Okay, we have, we have returning. Thank you. That was a lot of fun last year, but I almost cut myself like 60 times. So this year I figured I'd, uh, I'd do something nice like a grapefruit instead of a whole fish. That was a lot of work in a half an hour last time. But a lot of fun nonetheless. So let me show you just a quick little trick. What you can do with a grapefruit, right? So what I'll do is that I'll put this on a little tray, right? And uh, I had a friend of mine, Chris Lim. Um, we worked together in New York. Um, and he showed me this trick. And I've always kind of used it since then. So what we do is that we have a little bit of powdered sugar. OK? We're just going to do a light coating of powdered sugar on there. OK? And then we're just going to get a blowtorch. You can get these uh, from Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever you want. Right? And then you're just going to char the surface, the sugar on the top of the grapefruit right there. And what that's going to do, right, it's going to provide a little caramelized flavor. Uh, it's going to look nice as well. Uh, and it's going to take away a little bit of the, uh, the bitterness of the grapefruit. Uh, just with a touch of sugar on there, it's really going to make a big, big difference. So we just do a few of these for the plate. Then I'm going to plate up now. Okay, you just have a nicely little little bit of char on it. You know, you, maybe you guys go out to breakfast and you'll see like a, a grapefruit brulee or something like that, right? Have you seen those out? No, grapefruit brulees, right? That's kind of the same thing, same idea behind it. 
Way less sugar, though. Okay, grapefruit brulees are not healthy. I don't care who tells you they are. Okay? <laughs> They're definitely not. It's, uh, it's dessert for breakfast, okay? Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. That's right. So uh, I'll show you guys how, you know, I would plate up, um, you know, for an event here. So let me just get my puree pre-made. And then we'll start getting some taste out for you guys. We'll get everybody up here, which would be really nice. There's a couple different ways we can do this, right? We can kind of do the freestyle dots like that, right? Or another way, which is kind of fun, and you can see these. What I'll do is that I'll go to a little specialty shop, right? And you just have a little cake comb, right? If you don't have a lot of spoon skills, you know, to be able to put purees in a plate and stuff like that. This thing costs about five bucks. All right, it's usually used for pastry for putting textures on the side of cakes or chocolate. But why can't you use it for peas, right? So you just kind of come over like that, right? So that can look very nice like that and super professional just with a little, you know, $5 piece of, uh, of equipment there, right? So that's pretty easy, right? It looks super professional, you know? That's what I, you know, when I was working in restaurants and stuff, we'd always use the cake comb. Uh, for, you know, mashed potatoes and things like that that you wouldn't normally assess, you know, that you norm normally associate with something kind of fine dining like that. So, um, so you know, our plate's a bit of a mess, but we'll go on, all right? So we'll take a little bit of the crab salad, right? We'll just put it right down in the middle of the plate on a diagonal. These nice, huge lumps of crab, right? Really, all the herbs that I just snipped from the garden this morning and everything else, right, all kind of coming together there. Right? You could get a ring mold and kind of cram it all in there, but you would also lose the beauty that is this nice big lump crab meat, right? So we'll put that right down the middle. Since we have peas in the puree, right, I was going to put snap peas on top, right? So you have a few snap peas on top, right? If there's no pea puree in the plate, it wouldn't really make sense to put the snap peas on, okay? So kind of put those up like that. We're going to put... A few pieces, right, of our charred grapefruit. Maybe one kind of standing up like that on top. One over here in the pile of puree. One over here in the corner, kind of doing its own thing. One over here, right? And another piece just here, not even with the char, okay? Already looking like a decent appetizer, okay? Then, we'll take a few of those radishes that we got from the market this morning, right? I like to shave them paper, paper thin, so I can almost see through them, okay? And we'll just throw through those on there like that, okay? The plates that you'll be getting will not look like this, okay? <laughs> <laughs> all right, and you kind of have that all piled up right there, right? Uh, and then what we're going to do, uh, we have a little bit of, um, I made these crackers last night, okay? These crackers are made from almond flour, um, all-purpose flour. You have a little bit of uh, poppy seed in here, some butter, and some glucose, which is inverted sugar, right? And it's just a little cracker, okay? Like a little lemon poppy cracker that'll go great with the, uh, all the vegetables and the raw crab, right? So you just kind of throw that on like that, right? And another piece over here, okay? Just kind of get that in there like that, right? And then one more treat, if I can find it. That will do. Uh, borage. Okay, borage leaves taste like oyster. Okay, I grow these also in our backyard. They took forever to bloom. I did them from seed. They took like eight months to bloom. Uh, but these have a flavor of oyster. It's really amazing. These little tiny flowers. And what you, they take a long time to harvest. Uh, the leaves, you can make um, bread out of leaves, purees, and things like that. But it's a, it's a vegetal uh, kind of oyster flavor to it, which is really unique. Um, five minutes, thank you. Five minutes. I get carried away sometimes, as you can see. But then that's it, okay? That's how I, I would come to your house and serve you a crab salad, okay? <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, does anybody have any questions um, before we get going, or I can ramble on for the next five minutes? That's up to you guys. I'm sorry? This was on the menu at the Rowan, yes. That was my opening. It was uh, it was the spring menu at the Rowan. It was there. 
um, but probably not now. Anybody else? Yes. The brine for the lemon? Yeah, fresh turmeric, uh, saffron. A little, you don't need the saffron. You don't need the saffron because if you get the fresh turmeric and grate it, it has enough of that uh, flavor already. Okay? Uh, sugar and salt. Yeah, hot over that. Okay, and then we, get, we can get everybody up here and we can start plating for everybody. Uh, but it's a pleasure to give the plates, the little, um, the little plates. The little to-go plates, sorry. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we'll get a bite of this crab salad out to you guys. Um, everybody day drinking today or what? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> My drinking days are over, but I'm happy somebody else is enjoying it. <laughs> but um, yeah, pleasure to have you guys here today. Um, you know, if you'd like a business card or anything else, you know, uh, the website is snwinspired.com if you'd like to look it up. Um, again, we're looking at a brick and mortar a little later in the year. Um, you know, butcher shop, specialty food shop, I think that would be great for the Coachella Valley. Something independent, not the big markets. So that's our goal over the next um, six months. I'm going off to San Francisco to cult consult in a restaurant uh, over the summer, but I'll be back in October. So um, thanks for having me, and we'll get you some food here real quick. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>